Adventure. Tonight's story is entitled Incident of Aves Island by Christopher Charles. Caribbean Sea shone like burnished copper when we dropped anchor from the salvage ship Ventura. We lay approximately 300 miles northwest of Trinidad, latitude 63 degrees, longitude 15 degrees. It was my task to recover some highly secret prototype nuclear warheads from a wrecked B-52 jet bomber of the United States Air Force that lay in 200 fathoms of water below us. The recovery of those warheads was vital. If another world power managed to get hold of them, who knows what could result. A U.S. Navy frigate had immediately rushed to the scene of the disaster and had recovered a very small quantity of debris, including the vital flight recorder. Excuse me, Commander Fuller. Oh, please come in, Captain Benson. What have you come up with? Well, from the aircraft flight recorder, we've recovered about ten seconds taping before the jet crashed into the sea. Would you like to hear it, sir? Please. It sounds very interesting. Right. No response from controls. 4,000 feet stalling. Falling into a dive. Position 63 degrees and 15 degrees. Can do no more, base. Sea's coming up fast. This is it. Well, that's all we managed to recover. The... Rest is scattered all over the ocean. Hmm. It doesn't really tell us much. That pilot was completely resigned to his predicament. It doesn't follow. For instance, why didn't he bail out? It is rather strange. But remember that he said his controls were not responding. Could be his ejecting gear was also out. Possibly. Well, when the bath escapes ready, we'll find out all the answers. How long before it's in position? Well, they're just completing final adjustments when I left them. The linkage cables to the hoist? Also attached. I'll go and see if they're finished. I'll come with you. Thank you, Captain. (laughs) Wow, it's hot out here. You've never experienced a Caribbean summer before, Commander? Nope. It'll be cold down there. Cold as death. Bring it over here. Come on. Boy. Bring it down. Here we go. There's your bath escape, Commander Pullen. There it is. Very sleek, very yellow. Most modern available. Hey! Careful with that hatch cover. Sorry, sir. Here comes your diving companion. Uh, hello, Rod. Ready to go down? Afternoon, Commander. Yeah, I'm ready. I don't think that nucleon is. What's wrong? Well, the atmosphere? I've just completed a systems check. Two faults. A heavy-duty rivet next to the rear observation window is working loose. Or to starboard. Starboard. Hmm. What's the other fault? Number four auxiliary motor fails to reverse. And that's bad. Did you remove the inspection covers? Yeah. Electrical circuitry is fused, as well as broken linkages in the gear mechanism. By the sound of it, the equipment's not irreparable. Think you can do it? Well, I would like to repair it with new parts. Uh, it would take at least 36 hours to have the stuff flown to us, weather permitting. Yeah. Which it's not. Incidentally, we can expect a good, strong hurricane within the next 18 hours. Which doesn't leave us much time, Rod. I suggest you get busy right now. Will do, Commander. See you. Excuse me, Captain. Uh, yeah, what is it? A message from you, this frigate intrepid. Uh, thanks, Mr. Heston. Let's see. Report soundings. Evidence suggests large, unidentified underwater object, possibly foreign submarine. It could be freak warm water condition. Signals bouncing off. We'll investigate. Heston? Sir? Could you go and wake Commander Pullen? Ask him to come up on the bridge? Sir? Oh, uh, also give him the message uh, to Sparks, will you? Tell him it's urgent. Right, Captain. I'll see you right away. Uh, Captain Vincent, oh, I'm glad I found you here. The job's finished. Working like a charm. Commander Pullen will be very happy, Mr. Rodney. Should be on his way up here soon. I've just received this note from Intrepid. Here, read it. Uh, seems like we're not the only ones here. Yeah, it's a possibility. Where's Intrepid now, sir? 
Well, take these glasses. See Aves Island over there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Intrepid is just coming out to the left of the island. Quite hard to see against the setting sun. I've got it. She's doing quite a lick. I must be onto something. Could be. Uh, Commander Pullen, glad you could make it, sir. Good evening, Captain. Rod? Nuclear only is functioning 100%. Good. What was the message you wanted to give me, Captain? Well, just this wire from Intrepid, sir. Thought it might interest you. Hmm. Heh. <laughs> good grief. That's not so good. Now the message from Intrepid, Captain. Thanks. Object positively identified as a large submarine. Nuclear powered. Possibly E class. Nationality unknown. Also in international waters. Action taken. Monitoring. Submarine cruising at 18 knots, depth approximately 475. We'll inform you if anything develops. Well, there we have it, Commander. Yeah, I don't think this salvage operation is going to be easy. What nationality is that submarine, I wonder? Yeah, hard to see. These are free waters. Could be Russian, British, any other great power. Most of them possess that class of sub. And, of course, it could be a coincidence. The uh, sooner we get down there and haul that plane to the surface, the better. I'm ready when you are, Commander. Suppose I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Right. We dive in 45 minutes. That makes it uh, 1,400 hours. All right, Captain? Fine, Commander. Come on, Rod. Time to get into our diving gear. With you, Commander. We're ready to go, Captain. Right. Uh, check the communication system, will you? 100%, Captain. Careful with that. Let me speak to them, will you? Ventura calling Nucleon. Ventura calling Nucleon. Can you hear me? Hearing you loud and clear, Captain. Nucleon to Ventura. All systems okay. Request permission to dive. Go ahead, Nucleon. Keep us informed. Good luck. Release the hoist. Aye, aye, Captain. Two twenty feet and diving. Switch on sonar. Hello, this is Nucleon calling Ventura. We are at three hundred feet, completing a systems check. If anything goes wrong at this depth, we can still use Equilung equipment to get to the surface. Any deeper, then we had it. Did you get that, Ventura? Ventura here, Nucleon. I've had another report from Intrepid. She's lying right next to us. Submarine is at 500 feet in vicinity of B-52 bomber. Speed dropped to five knots. Heading in your direction. That's all. All clear. Over. Yep. All understood. Proceeding to dive now. I'll leave a lot of cable slack to accommodate for the increasing swell. Over and out. Anything on that screen? No, still nothing, Commander. Prepare to release more ballast. Now. Nearly 500 feet and diving. Commander, I've got something. Large metal object about 50 feet to our left. Depth about 635 feet. Good. Calculations were very accurate. Let's get down there. Rotate bow thrusters 45 degrees. Increase tail thrust. That's it. Going very well. Look! The sub! It's going to hit us! Wow! It's massive! Full power thrust and ascent! Now! It's no good! We're right in its path! Yellow Ventura! Emergency on collision course with summary... Ah! We're diving. Can't control her. Rod, emergency power thrust. Operational. 600 feet, Commander. Bottom's coming up fast. Ah, she's responding. Nearly there. We're going to hit the bottom. You okay, Commander? No, I, I think so. What's more important, 
How's Nucleon? Nucleon skin is fractured. Water's coming in. Unless we do something, we're going to die down here. Tight corner, Rod. At least sonar is working. Have you completed that power check? Yeah, I'm pleased to say it's still working. Damage is not too serious. This is Ventura. If you can hear us, Nucleon, please come in. Over. Hello, Ventura. Glad to hear that you're still with us. Over. Wow. Am I pleased to hear you're still alive? How's Nucleon? What the police has happened? We had a collision with that damned sub. We're busy assessing the damage at the moment. So far, we have a bent bow plane. Not too serious, though. The skin's fractured, but fortunately, the outer skin only, which surrounds the auxiliary battery compartment. The batteries are irreparably damaged. And, of course, we've had to seal it off. Otherwise, all systems 100%. I think. Over. Commander Pullen, I suggest you postpone the mission for the time being. Weather conditions are getting much worse. Large swell building up. And that submarine could cause further trouble. Over. Uh, Captain, we've not suffered very serious damage, and we're down here in one piece. The hoist cables are not damaged, and I think we should continue as before. Over. As you wish, Commander. Over. Uh, Ventura, I'm going to operate the main motors. Depending on how they work, we'll determine if we carry on. Now, hold on. Ready, Rod? Ready, Commander. Here we go. Contact now. Throttle. Switch. We're okay. Hear that, Ventura? Loud and clean. Good luck. Hey, Captain Vincent. Carry on monitoring our progress. Over. Can't see anything because of the sand we stirred up. Hold it. It's clearing. Speed, five knots. Depth, 590 feet. Target should be right in front of us. There it is. See it, Commander? Yeah, yeah. Oh, poor devils. Ventura? Receiving you, Commander. We sighted the jet. It hasn't disintegrated. Just the tail assembly and part of the cockpit. Otherwise, it's intact. You hear that, Ventura? Certainly did. Good news. Uh, will it be difficult to raise? Over. We're hovering right over it now. The plane's lying on the edge of a chasm. Over. We're ready up here. Start salvaging operations when you like. Over. Thank you, Ventura. We're completing the survey now. Expect to attempt to attach cables quite soon. Over. I want to take a closer look at that cockpit. Activate stern thrusters, Rod. Right, Commander. That's better. Yeah, you can see right inside now. Oh, Lord, it's not a pleasant sight. Pressure must have done that to the pilot. Squashed like an egg. Come, let, let's get down to business. We can attach one grapple to that fuselage there and the other one to that section near the tail. Well, keep us harboring. I'll get those hydraulic arms working. Uh, drop two feet, Rod. Slowly, slowly. A bit more. All right, hold it there. Right. Just a little manipulation. There, done it. Oh, well done, Commander. Now for the tail grapple. Easy does it. Nearly there. Is that too high? A little. Say... Three feet. Now, take it easy. Yeah. That, that's better. Now, hold it. Keep it there. Holding. Ah, done that one. Easier than I thought it would be. Ventura, did you hear all that? All the cables are in position. Over. Got it. Congratulations, both of you. Over. Now, give us time to get away a little, Captain. I'll give you the word when you can start hoisting. Over. Fine, Nucleon. Sea's getting rough up here, but I think that our hoist will accommodate for that. Over. Oh, darn it. That dicky motor failed to reverse again. But I repaired that. Probably that collision fouled it up again. We can operate without it. All right. This is far enough, Captain. Start hoisting. Okay. Here we go. It's a lot of slack. I can see the cables getting tauter. A little bit more pressure on that tail cable, Ventura. Will do. Lines are taut now. It's going to be a slow business. Over. 
Captain, we're coming up. No more we can do down here. Ready, Rod. Yes, Commander. Oh, no, there's a seaquake creating a devil of a lot of sand clouds I can't see. Vertical thrusters, full power. Let's get out of here. The plane, it's sliding toward the chasm. Hey, right underneath us. That wing is going to... Ah! Oh, yeah. well, well, what's happening? The lights are gone out. We must get the crew. Rodney, where are you? Hey, we're falling right into the chasm. All contact with Nuclon lost, including cables. The cables to the bomber? We still have those there. Small compensation. Give me that mic again, will you? Here, yeah, sir. This is Ventura calling Nucleon. If you can hear me, please come in. Ventura calling Nucleon. Come in, please. Over. It's no good, sir. They're gone. Yeah. And well, there's not a darn thing we can do. Except wait. Yes, sir. Couldn't we have rescue equipment flown in? Never reach us in time. Their oxygen expires in eight hours. Minus two hours for decompression. That leaves them six hours. You heard Commander Pullen's last words. Falling into a chasm, weren't they? No, we can do nothing except wait. How are you feeling, Rod? It's my head. Oh, you got a nasty gash there. Is that morphine killing the pain? Oh, very slightly. Where the heck are we? In that sea quake turbulence. We hit the plane, or it hit us. I, I don't know. Down we went, down the chasm. What depth are we at? Close to 5,000 feet. What? And Nucleon is designed to go to a maximum of 4,000 feet. Oh, we haven't been squashed yet is a mystery to me. It must be the two-inch thick metal skin and the five-inch plexiglass ports. Any any contact with Ventura? Nothing. Every cable was ripped away. Oh, got any ideas? None, until we check out what's wrong with Nucleon. Do you feel up to it? If it means getting to the surface quicker. The heliox storage sphere is not damaged. That means we've got about seven hours of oxygen left on reduced output. Why, why the lights dim? It must be getting low as well. Uh, not too bad. Capacity of power in the battery is about 57%. Well, what about the ballast? Uh, that's the problem. We haven't enough ballast to get us out of here unless we drop the main battery part. Oh. That'll deprive us of most of our power supply. Apart from lack of ballast, we've lost the left front bow plane. So our guidance control doesn't work too good. The starboard ballast tank is completely flooded, so we'll have a sharp list if ever we get out of this mud. You mean we're embedded in the stuff? Yep. Now, this is my plan. Yeah? Transfer as much power from the main battery to the auxiliary batteries. Then switch all the motors onto full power, drawing power from the main battery. Yeah. I intend to drop the main battery part. It weighs two tons. Without that, we should manage it. Yeah, I'm with you. Very clever. If it works, yeah. Oh, uh, there's just one thing. Yeah? Number four auxiliary motor. I want you to fix it. Oh, it's going to be a tough job from the inside. I know. But without that motor, we've had our chip. All right, Commander. I'll see what I can do. Think you can do it in under 30 minutes? 30? Can't spare any more time than that. Uh, I'd better start straight away. I'll help you with a hatch. All right, Commander. You can test that motor now. Well, hold thumbs. Here we go. It's okay. Well done, Rod. All right, Commander. I've done my bit. Now get us out of here. I'll do my best. Yeah. All functioning perfectly. Now to release the main battery part. Rod? Yeah? There'll be a drop in engine power as soon as the main battery disconnects, so don't get alarmed. Right. Jensen! Now! We're away! We've done it! It's about time. It's getting very cold down here. A mile to the surface? Just about. Switch on sonar. Find out where we are. It works! Surprised? Nope. Depth, four or five hundred feet and rising. Rod? Yeah? Start scanning, will you? Right. What's the situation directly above us? Hold on. Yeah, a strong signal. Yeah, there's an overhang about 100 feet above us. Better alter course. How are we now? Still above us. Seventy feet now. I can't get away from it. We're drawn towards it. 
I can't afford to lose any ballast. Stop motors! It's quiet down here. What's our depth? Three, nine hundred feet. Back within diving limits. And the overhang? Oh, Forty feet above us. Can't we do anything to get away from it? We can't just sit here waiting to hit it. Well, we're powerless to do anything. I'd like to slow down the ascent, but that means releasing air, and we've got precious little of that as it is. How far now? Twenty-five feet. Any moment now. We may miss. Here we go. Pray for no damage. Now, not easy, does it? Take the paint off, nothing else, please. I'll recoat it. Another quake. Sounds like it. Hold on. Coming this way. Start all engines. Full astern. We're not touching the side anymore. Trying to avoid possible rock fall. We must be out of that turn to get away from the side like that. Depth. Three, two hundred feet and rising. Another scan would be helpful, Rod. Okay, Commander. Oh, we've been hit. Gap three, four, fifty feet. In control. Rod, check sonar scan. Rod. Rod, he hurts. It hits my head again. It's bleeding. I'm, I'm fine in, in, in a moment. No, no, no. Just relax. Yeah, let, let me help you. I, I'm feeling better. I'm afraid water is spraying into one of the auxiliary batteries. Chlorine gas is leaking into the heliosphere. You know, that means that... It means that it's getting into our oxygen supply. It's poison. Only one thing to do. Reduce output of oxygen. It's not going to be nice. Oh, anything's better than chlorine gas. Deb, 2900 and still going up. We'll make it yet. Feeling any better, Rod? Could do with some more air. It's getting very stuffy. Can't be helped. What's our depth? 750 feet. Batteries, 27% power left. <coughs> that chlorine smell is getting stronger. Content is near the danger level. Rodney, we may not make it. I'm past caring, Commander. All the pain in my head. It's getting more than I can take. Any, any more pain left? No, I... No, there isn't. I'm sorry, Rodney. There's no more I can do. <laughs> Gas, it's, it's getting too much. How far to go? Five, ninety feet. That's too far. We'll never make it. Captain. Captain, why don't you go and sleep? You've been up all night. You're exhausted. It's not a beautiful dawn. Sea looks so peaceful, tranquil. I see. I wonder if they're still alive. The life supply runs out in 20 minutes. Heston, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I'll be back soon. Captain, look! Look over there! That's a nucleon! They made it! Holy! Quick! Instruct the rescue launch to get ready. Quick! Hurry, man! Hurry! I see. Lower it gently on the deck now. Come on. Gee, it's battered. I can't see any movement, sir. They're either unconscious or... Or dead. I'm afraid to say that the chlorine level in there is above danger. I think they're dead, sir. me two months in intensive care to recover from that ordeal. Rodney Pullen, my brother, died of chlorine poisoning in a fractured skull two hours after the hatch of Nucleon was opened. The B-52 jet bomber was hoisted to the surface. 
The prototype nuclear warheads had fallen out of the damaged bomb hatch. But they're safe in a depth of over a mile. The foreign submarine? That remains a mystery. High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal.